So we're going to talk now about the posting of videos on YouTube that have been censored by YouTube. Uh, the video that I just made was on uh, the involvement of Goldman Sachs in the crashing of the Greek economy and the sovereign debt crisis that ensued from that. Uh, it's been censored when I posted it on YouTube. I made large additions in my own living room to what I saw on the news this morning from Al Jazeera and I explained how what was a local crisis in Italy, Spain, Portugal uh, and in the affected country that was covered of Greece that that asset stripping has been going on not involving one bank but all of the major banks around the world and the portrayal that the asset stripping of Greece was for sums uh, like 600,000 euros is an absolute denial of the magnitude of the theft. It's trillions and trillions of euros, trillions and trillions of dollars. And as Blankstein says in the video, uh, that they can do price swaps and currency exchanges at the Bureau Exchange uh, within a thousand, within the period of one minute. That's the extent of the fraud we're dealing with but the portrayal that it was only Goldman Sachs is an absolute lie which is why my video and the additions to what was broadcast on Al Jazeera this morning has been censored. Gordon can you tell me a little bit about why you cannot open my Facebook page and whether you have a Facebook page? Well it's, uh, I haven't tried to open your Facebook page for a start not this morning um, but the uh, but shocking on, news that you just told me about whether you have a Facebook page on uh, mine, on my Facebook page it's an account under my name under counter harassment and it was set up by a Russian agent a woman called Serena Jane Strelnikov uh, who is the adopted daughter of one uh, Peter Wolfgang Filippinetti, who managed through two uh, Channel Island accounts to money move over three million US dollars of stolen investors cash uh, and then uh, use the same two accounts in the Channel Islands to send to a backstreet bureau to change where the money was drawn in cash by the perpetrators of the fraud in South Africa of over 800 victims uh, amounting to 130 million US dollars but he was just one of the money mules uh, personally involved in a pol police criminal fraud case of which my retired partner was one of 800 victims and how do they portray Gordon Bowden on that Facebook page? What well there's, there's a photograph of myself and Val which was taken off and Val is the victim of that massive financial yeah, crime Val, you lost Val 50 thousand pounds in that fraud yeah uh, 50 thousand US dollars she lost she was one of two local residents in the, the city of East London in South Africa one of two of 800 odd other victims that were later explained to us by the police who were part of the bigger fraud and they were not just South African, they were international victims all over the world. And the video that I've just seen this morning purports to show how one ruthless big bank aligned with politicians in America uh, was able to asset strip the EU and European regions, notably Greece, as if it was the fault of only one big bank. They portrayed one Peter Sutherland as a director at that bank. Can you tell us a wee bit more about how many banks Peter Sutherland was involved in? Well, I haven't done the complete uh, count. My main focus was on the Royal Bank of Scotland and the role of Sir Steve Robson. But Peter Sutherland was unequivocally a director at the Royal Bank of Sp Scotland for many years. Okay. Uh, my, my investigations run to 2006 where I traced uh, some of the uh, fake oil and gas and mining companies who were using or selling 
uh, boat shares uh, via the um, oil and gas management for the Royal Bank of Scotland who then purchased boat shares in these fake virtual oil and gas companies including multiples which I declared were nothing more than Ponzi scams. So that's companies within the Cairn Empire that you and Peter Ayer have documented. So this is that's Gordon Bowden right. and Peter Ayer read the Pandora's box articles. You have now since had a dialogue with the shareholders at the RBS who are trying, like you, to call the people who are involved in these grand larceny schemes to account. Can you tell us a little bit about the shareholder movement? Um, I was made aware of the shareholder movement and their email address where I sent them detailed evidence which should be used to confront the uh, renegade directors who were removed and resigned with multiple million uh, uh, pension schemes that they should confront them with very basic questions and those were that the toxic assets and the toxic debt uh, retained by the Royal Bank of Scotland should be um, exposed to the shareholders as to what companies were the toxic debt companies and I made it known to the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland shareholders group that they would include virtual oil gas and mining companies that uh, those boat shares purchased with insider, and I state insider uh, uh, collaboration by members of the board of the Royal Bank of Scotland. And you can confirm that the RBS or whichever subsidiary the RBS that was used is totally insolvent, but is not is still able to trade. What what magnitude are we talking about in terms of the IPOs and the stock flotations here? How it much? Is it's trillions, it's trillions because the the average person has got no um, capability of understanding the magnitude of the fraud that has been allowed to be perpetrated by senior politicians because they in turn, when you check the, the, the public donations uh, by fake oil and gas and mining company directors who are directors only because there's no other employees of these exotic named oil and gas and mining companies that they are in fact sponsors and donors of political parties like uh, um, the Conservative Party, Labour Party and even uh, the Lib Dem Party that these people are the puppet string pullers of the politicians and they act for and on behalf of those business people um, the people like uh, Sir William Bill Gamble, uh, Bowring Gamble, who uh, manipulate the uh, po politicians to um, force, and I say force, be, uh, the Indian government to accept the mass transfer of billions of pounds in a Ponzi scam deal, and that was Ken Energy, Ken India, and Vedanta. And the same Prime Minister, David Cameron, who acted with the force of a Prime Minister, also forced through the deal with Vodafone. And these are massive public entity companies run by public shareholders who have a board of directors who are totally corrupt. So we've mentioned Scotland, England, America. I would like to remind you that the video I had censored this morning on YouTube featured European leaders like Mario Draghi who did himself work for Goldman Sachs and immediately moved into those fraudulent transactions. The portrayal that they are just for hundreds of thousands of pounds or euros is an absolute falsitude. They are massive frauds and that is why Europe citizens have no future unless they confront the leaders. I'd like to stop that there now Gordon to let them see that what was domestic fraud in your family's case amounts to fraud by the CIA who run Facebook and they can they can plant people in there with false IDs and slander innocents who are doing the job that the serious fraud office should be doing 
all of these things are done completely out with the law there are no prosecutions they still get their massive bonuses at the end of the year uh, and we're not allowed to talk about it even if they published it on the global news this morning and we're not allowed to portray their sidelining narrative on what was important enough to be on the news this morning uh, so thank you Gordon I'll switch my video off there at that point would you would you like just like an update on why the serious fraud office uh, would not prosecute well it's quite simple if you run back in history who the uh, the chiefs of staff of the serious fraud office were and they include relatives of David McKenzie Donald Mills who was uh, implicated and tried in absence in the Italian courts for money laundering and setting up virtual money laundering shell companies in the United Kingdom and he was uh, uh, money laundering for Silvio Berlusconi and the Mafia and yet our government has not upheld any inquiry into those fake companies used as shells for money laundering for the Mafia. Well, just get them to explain that, uh, George. And the, the video I've had censored this morning by YouTube included famous names like Miss Lagarde, Strauss Kahn, the heads of the IMF. They are all involved in global theft from global citizens and it is openly declared that they ch chop it up into little chunks to make one person look like a culprit. It is a multinational master plan and very few of the lay public have the vaguest awareness that that is why their kids have no future. I'll stop there Gordon and we'll move on to another topic. No problem.